in Fallout New Vegas, we can find a lot of monstrosities that only seem to exist to make life in the Mojave a little more complicated. From zombie-like feral ghouls to mutated insects, the post-war desert is filled with horrors around every corner. South of the Allied Technologies offices, we can find an old barn swarming with fire ants. This should be enough to keep any curious wastelander away, but if we dig further, we can find the biggest creature in Fallout New Vegas. Inside the ant mound, if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of your impending doom as you get closer to the main hall. This is the giant ant queen, and she is the largest enemy that we can find in the game, with the exception of the giant robo-scorpion from Old World Blues. While she can be quickly dispatched, her sheer size is impressive enough to make a visit to this ant mound. We can find a couple of dead wastelanders here with a small bit of random loot on them, but the main attraction is the ant queen, and this is the only location that we can find her in the game. A giant, unique, fire-breathing treasure. When we got the trailer for Fallout New Vegas at E3, we could see the courier wearing an armored version of the Vault 21 jumpsuit. The suit even shows up at the ending slides for the game. However, we never find it in the Mojave. Of course, with the use of console commands, we can see this armor for ourselves. It looks pretty similar to the Vault 13 variant we see in the DLC, yet for some reason, this jumpsuit was cut from the final game. It turns out this was by accident, as both Fallout New Vegas game director Josh Sawyer and senior designer Chris Avalon have confirmed that the outfit was intended to be in the final version of New Vegas, but was accidentally removed from the game before it shipped. Luckily, we can still find this lost relic with console commands and where the fit the courier was made for. Also, it's fun to add this to any other vault suits that you may have in your collection. We can find a lot of random objects littered around the Mojave in Fallout New Vegas. They come in all shapes and sizes, and some are even children's toys from the pre-war. One of these lost relics was cut from Fallout New Vegas, a teddy bear named Barnabas Bear. The stuffed animal would have shown up around the Bitter Springs area, and it seems to be tied to a dialogue line that reads, I like you, will you take Barnabas Bear to New Vegas when you go? This bear would have been added to the two other unique teddies that we can find around the Mojave, joining Mr. Cuddles and Sergeant Teddy. Both are involved in quests that see the courier return them to their child owners. The Fallout Wiki relates Barnabas Bear to a children's program from the UK called Becky and Barnaby Bear. The show would showcase different locations around the world, with Becky and Barnaby teaching the audience about the area. This would tie in with bringing Barnabas to New Vegas. Unfortunately, the bear was cut from the final game but we can still make sure that old Barnabas makes the trip with the help of console commands. One of the best parts of Fallout New Vegas is the vast amount of items that we can find around the Mojave. Sometimes you can come across things that you didn't know were in the game, or find unique variants of stuff that you've seen hundreds of times before. One of my favorite things to do is to find rare items during my playthroughs and store them at my player house. Most of the time, I will never see them again, but I like collecting things around the wasteland. That led me to look into one of the rarest hats in the game, the beret. Now granted, we can see the standard green beret emblazoned with the NCR logo all over the Mojave, but it can be a little tricky to get our hands on one for ourselves. One of the easiest ways I have found is looting one from the NCR deserter Layla at the Vicky and Vance Casino. It's one of the only ways to get one without stealing and it's an easy battle. Of course, one could nuke the Long 15 and go fight Royas for his, but that seems like a massive undertaking for such a small reward. There is one beret that we can find in the game world, and though it does count as stealing, we can get it without getting discovered easily. Inside the ruined store in Freeside, where Kieran is giving out supplies and food to NCR citizens, we can find a duffel bag in a small back room. This is the only place we can find the beret without it being on someone's person in all of New Vegas. One of the reasons this could be is the way the hat acts in the game world. If we drop one, we can see it's incredibly skinny and tends to bounce around a lot more than other objects do. It also likes to be placed standing straight up instead of lying down as one would expect. So perhaps we can thank some janky physics for why we can't find many of these berets in the wasteland. In Old World Blues, we travel far from the bright lights of New Vegas and into the Big Empty. The courier meets the Think Tank and Dr. Mobius while trying to get their missing body parts back. One of the Think Tank members has quite the history, Dr. Boris. Boris is responsible for the Night Stalkers and Cazadoras that we find around the Mojave and at Big Mountain. 
though traveling to his old home in Higgs Village sheds some more light on the type of person that he was. In House 103, the one with Gabe's doghouse in the back, where you can find Stripe with the Wild Wasteland perk, we see the past living quarters of Dr. Boris. One of the first things that pop out is the many unique bird cages that litter the dwelling. Heading upstairs, we can find a recipe for making medicine books at the sink, and inside one of these bird cages, we can grab a key to the basement. On the way down, we can see a painting seemingly of Tranquility Lane, which furthers the connection to Higgs Village that simulation has, but more interesting is the scene we find downstairs. Cages litter the floor, and teddy bears can be seen with various medical instruments violently stabbed into them. We can find a ripper on the shelf, which any melee build will want to grab, though it was likely used on whatever experiments Boris got up to down here. Higgs Village is one of my favorite locations in Fallout New Vegas. It adds so much character to the think tank and is one of the most eerie places I think we can find in the Fallout series. Traveling the Mojave can be pretty hot, especially in a post-war wasteland, and most of the drinks the courier can find are room temperature at best and red hot at worst. Luckily, we can find a solution to that through the NCR. First, if you have the Nuka Chemist perk, then you can solve this problem with some easy crafting. But for the rest of the couriers that don't take that perk, we can find some rare drinks that will hit just right. At the Mojave Outpost Barracks, if we check behind the bar, we can find three ice-cold Nuka Colas. These drinks offer a bit of a boost over standard warm Nuka and will never lose their temperature. We can find two more inside Camp McCarran, next to the interrogation room inside the terminal building. Before the release of the Old World Blues DLC, these were the only five cold Nukas in the game. After the DLC was added, we could find one more frosty cola on the floor of Dr. Mobius' house, number 102, in Higgs Village. This ice-cold Nuka Cola is the only one in the game that doesn't count as stealing if we pick it up, and with how hot the desert is, you will want to add as many of these bad boys to your collection as soon as you can. Thank you to Batspit from TikTok for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, we can find a lot of different ammo types, some large, some small, and some even have late 2000s memes on them. Suppose you come across a box of 22 LR ammo in New Vegas and look closely at the label. In that case, you may notice a crosshair fixed on a familiar face, the dramatic chipmunk. It seems whoever made this texture was either a fan of the meme or really hated it, as we see the prairie dog from the viral video is a target in this art. The meme originally came from a Japanese show called Hello Morning. During the episode, the hosts interact with a prairie dog, and he performs his famous bit. One of the strangest places to visit in Fallout New Vegas is the Ultra Lux Casino on the Strip. It looks way too fancy on the outside to not have something nefarious going on within. And of course, anyone who has explored the veritable Garden of Eden for themselves can confirm that there is. During the Beyond the Beef quest that sees the courier help Heck Gunderson find his lost son, we can learn that there is an investigator looking into an earlier disappearance. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human flesh for any reason. It's written in the Charter. There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. Private investigator. Ah, yes, I remember the gentleman. This was about the missing bride. Such an awful thing. I do hope he finds her whereabouts. If I might pry, have you found something that will help his investigation? Of course, of course. Now, ordinarily, we don't give out guest information, but I think, given the circumstances, he'll want to speak with you. 
Let's see. He hasn't checked out yet. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. I hope we can put this whole matter to rest at last. Heading up to the room will lead us to discover the body of this PI. A couple of white glove thugs will jump the courier here, but after the fight, we can take a look at who is lying on the ground. This is Jay Barnes, and he was hot on the case when he was seemingly murdered perhaps by the same two white gloves that just tried to jump the courier. Searching his person will show a matchbook as a clue, but the clothes he is wearing can't be looted. This is the trench coat and the fedora, both visually identical to the mysterious stranger's outfit. These clothing items are NPC only, and even when using console commands, they will not show up in our inventory, thus preventing us from ever wearing them. It's important to note that if you have the Wild Wasteland perk, Jay is replaced by Crusoe. During this encounter, his clothes can be looted, but they are not the trench coat and fedora. In fact, they will not show up anywhere else in the game. So if you don't have the Wild Wasteland perk, this is your only chance to see them. This could be because the mysterious stranger wears these clothes and they may be coded to not drop for the player. Whatever the case, we are left to just observe these rare items, never being able to add them to our collection. In Fallout New Vegas, the courier can find themselves plundering many a ransacked building. From old gas stations to underground bunkers, the Mojave has a ton of locations for us to visit on our adventures in the outskirts of New Vegas. One of these locations is the Repcon headquarters. This is the primary operating office of the Rocket Engineering and Production Company of Nevada, or Repcon, and consists of three floors. The grounds are patrolled by Mr. Handy Robots, and they become hostile to beings that don't pass their checks. However, if a courier with less than stellar intelligence finds themselves here, they can talk their way out of a potential dust-up with the robots, seemingly because of dumb luck. With an intelligence stat of 2 or lower, the courier will blurt out the first thing on their mind, which just happens to be a password for the Mr. Handy on the third floor. Third floor access is for executives only. Please identify. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. In Freeside, we can really see what life in the Mojave can be like for some people. The streets are filled with trash, hungry children chase rats for food, and thugs hide around every corner. One bastion of hope is the Old Mormon Fort which rests just inside the belly of the beast. Occupied by the followers of the apocalypse, the fort could be one of the last hopes for Freeside citizens. Three of these citizens that we can find inside the fort are resting after a quarrel with some NCR soldiers. Their names are Roy. Wayne, and Ferris, which, when combined, references one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. Roy Wayne Ferris is better known by his ring name, the Honky Tonk Man, and at the time of this recording, he stands as the longest reigning intercontinental champion in WWE history at 453 days though the ring general approaches. I had the pleasure of spending an afternoon with the WWE Hall of Famer this year and his insight into the wrestling business and his terrific sense of humor was an absolute joy to listen to. It's great to see that someone that was developing New Vegas decided to show some respect from one of the greatest to step in the ring. In Fallout 3, the Lone Wanderer is tasked to do research for a wasteland survival guide with Moira Brown of Megaton. Upon completion of the quest, we are rewarded with a copy of the book for ourselves, but we never see how much of an effect it has had on the wasteland when we are done. Though we can find three copies of the book in the base game of Fallout New Vegas, this was an intentional decision from New Vegas game director Josh Sawyer to show the impact the Lone Wanderer had on the rest of the wasteland. We can find one at Matthew's animal husbandry farm, lying upstairs in the loft of a barn. There is also a copy at Lone Wolf Radio, close to the bed at the back of the trailer. And finally, one of the books rests on the scavenger platform surrounded by lake lurks. However, there is one more to be found in the DLCs of Fallout New Vegas. The Wasteland Survival Guide can be crafted in Old World Blues, but more interestingly, we can find one in the Divide lying in some waste drums next to a skeleton. Here at the Waste Disposal Station is the only copy of the book we can find outside of the base game, and they are quite helpful, raising our survival skill by three with each one we read. While traveling the Mojave, the courier can learn a lot about not only the surrounding area, but how to survive in it as well. One of the key tools to surviving this wasteland is combat, and going unarmed is always an option. If we get our unarmed skill to 50, we can start to unlock some fun attacks when inside vats. 
one of which can be pretty easily missed due to the requirements to see it in action. The stomp attack is only available after getting your unarmed skill to 50 and knocking your opponent to the ground. Once this happens, if we use vats on the downed enemy, we have the option to stomp them into the dirt. This attack went unnoticed by me for quite some time because anytime I knocked someone out, I would simply run up and spam attacks, not even thinking about vats. So when I finally saw it for myself when doing an unarmed run, it was a welcome addition to the arsenal. While traveling the outskirts of New Vegas, there are a ton of things to find and people to see on the desert highways that cover the Mojave. Sometimes, we can even find lost relics of the pre-war hiding in plain sight. When approaching the Nevada Highway Patrol Station, it's easy to get overwhelmed. The jackals have taken control of the property and escaped NCR convicts litter the roads leading to the building. However, inside the patrol cars, we can find a nice little stash that's been waiting for over two centuries. These broken down police vehicles have certainly seen better days, but so has the person who lies in the back seat of the middle car. Here, we can find a skeleton of presumably a man, perhaps a criminal, or maybe even a detective, clutching a couple of suitcases. It seems to me this person may have been trying to find refuge when the bombs dropped, or could be hiding from things after the apocalypse. Whatever the case, we can find a stack of 20 pre-war bills and some jet in these suitcases, which can be sold or used to help the courier in their journey. What happened to this person is a mystery, and I would love to hear your theories in the comments below. When stumbling through Fallout New Vegas, one of the things you should be thinking about the most is your armor. You aren't going to get far in the Mojave if you're just walking around in your underwear, and luckily we can find a plethora of options to cover up our sensitive areas. One of my favorite suits of armor is the Elite Riot gear found in the Lonesome Road DLC. I think it's one of the best looking clothing pieces in the Fallout series, and it offers a good amount of protection as well. One of the funny things about the helmet of the Elite Riot gear is that you can place certain hats on top of the headgear and reap the benefits of both items. This happens because the helmet is tagged as hair in the files of Fallout New Vegas, so other hats that have tags that won't change your hair will simply be placed on top of the helmet. This is a great way to dress up for a wasteland party or just get some more buffs while wearing some good armor. Either way, you should always show off your fashion sense out in the Mojave. When we reach Boulder City in Fallout New Vegas, we are hot on Benny's trail, so it's forgivable that we may have missed a conveniently placed duffel bag that has some fun loot inside. On top of a conveyor belt by the old train station, we can find this bag, which holds a good amount of NCR money, some aid items, and trail mix. The trail mix is quite interesting. While we can craft it, if your survival skill is lower than 25, or you don't have the fresh ingredients needed, these would be the only trail mixes you could find before the release of the Honest Hearts DLC. After that, we could find two more in Zion, one in the Glass Chime Cave surrounded by white legs, and another lying next to a skeleton in the mole rat infested Sweet Flower Cave. Without crafting, these are the only four trail mixes in the game. While the food shares the same item model as the lunchbox in-game, it's a rare variant that anyone would want to add to their collection. When venturing around the south side of Vegas, one of the biggest problems we face is the fiends that call the area home. These ruthless raiders waste no time attacking outsiders and are fueled by every chem under the sun. Some of the fiend leaders have quite the reputation around the Mojave, and if we restore the cut dialogue that was going to be used for non-hostile fiend encounters, we can see this rings true even amongst their own ranks. If a female courier shows up to talk to driver Nefi or Violet, both will warn the player about Cook Cook, especially Nefi, who has unique dialogue for this. What you want, freak show? Don't fuck with fiends. Driver Nephi will brain your skull in. Cook, cook, cook. You don't even know what he'll do. Really? Listen, you don't want to mess with Cook Cook, and you really don't want to let him get you alone. Trust me. Cook Cook himself has unique dialogue for female couriers, and it only strengthens what his peers are saying about him. Morning. Hey there, sweet thing. Want to ride on the Cook Cook Express? Who am I? I'm the scariest motherfucker you ever gonna meet. I'm Cook Cook, bitch. Better not forget it. If I had to guess, it's because I cook shit for the rest of the gang. I'm a good cook. Maybe I'll make you dinner sometime. Get fucked.